Hey plant friends, watch this video before you bring your houseplants back indoors for the colder months on Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Plant friends, I'm reporting to you from Fiala Farm today. My houseplants, Limey My Lime Tree, who looks so fierce right now, and two of my Monsteras have been summering at Fiala Farm, I guess, outdoors. I wanted to do an experiment and move them, especially since we moved and needed some extra space. So I'm happy to report that my plants did so beautifully and really enjoyed a summer outdoors, specifically Limey. I would say he has probably twice the amount of leaves that he had. Um, I also fertilized him at the beginning of the summer, but he just is so much more compact, so much more bushy growth, um, and his leaves are a lot darker. So as I've mentioned to you guys, he's been struggling with spider mites and like really never came back. A summer outdoors in the fresh air really did him good. Um, but my plants have been outdoors, and if you know, when you put your plants outdoors for the summer, there are several things that you have to do before you bring them indoors, or your plants could potentially contaminate the rest of your collection and I've heard horror stories of one batch of spider mites traveling in on one plant and infecting a collection of a hundred plants and the, like the entire collection being wiped out. So I figured I'd do these steps alongside you. You can watch me and then do it yourself. So the first step is to wash your plant down with a hose, something that can give like a really strong squirt to the leaves. Or you can, if you can't do this outside, you can, I, when I lived in New York City, I used to take them into my bathtub and do this. But you want to number one, look on the bottom sides of the leaves. That's where pests will hitchhike from outdoors to indoors and wreak havoc on your plant collection. So I don't see anything to my eye. I mean, oh, look at this. I've, there are some really beautiful new fenestrated leaves. They're like so tender and lime green um, before they darken. So I don't see any any pests to my eye. I don't have one of those fancy mic, um, lenses to see small, like spider mites, sometimes you need a lens to see. But what I am gonna do, I mean, there's like bird poop <laughs> on this leaf. I'm gonna take my hose and I'm gonna spray down the tops and the bottoms of both of these plants. In that process, I gave all the leaves some short squirts to like get any pests I could off of, washed some um, pest excre excrement. This Monstera looks good. This Monstera has a couple of suspect leaves. It threw off a couple of smaller leaves and the coloring looks kind of mottled. So I'm actually just gonna go in and chop those leaves off. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Also, it's putting off a ton of new growth that's fenestrated and looks really happy. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay, next up after washing these guys down is I like to take a insect so horticultural spray. Um, if you listen back to the garden common garden pest episode of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast, our bug expert Nadia um, gives her like everybody has their own like recipe for horticultural sprays. She gives a recipe. Some people mix soap and water. Some people mix alcohol and water. I keep it simple and organic and use Espoma Organics insect so insect soap they have a couple of different products now i'm going to spray down the entire plant just like i did with the water but now i'm going to go in and spray all the leaves and spray all the undersides of the leaves in hopes that if there are any pests left after the water that this insect soap is going to go in and wreak havoc on whatever spider mites are trying to come in and infect my plant collection Once again, if you don't have an outdoor space, I have done this in my bathtub so many times. And then after I took my plants out, just ran my water and rinsed the rest of the soap. This is organic, so it's not gonna hurt um, down the drain. So don't get intimidated if you don't have a lot of space to do this. So although Limey has like thrown off so much growth this season, um, one part was because I fertilized him. Uh, with some citrus tone. Other part is just that I think he was like soaking up the sun. He was getting so much sunlight this summer. He's done so well up here, but as you can see in the pot, there's, I don't know what those things are. He's got all sorts of little green, I think they're like wild mustards. They were in his pot, like they've shown up in his pot and then gone away and they like really came full force. There's also like a full weed. <laughs> 
that's about to flower. <laughs> so I think it's been a while since I've repotted him. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually before I bring him inside, and this will help in case there are any pests or any remaining spider bites. I don't even know what attacked him last year, but whatever has been going on in his soil, I'm actually just gonna repot him into the same pot because he's not root bound. So I'll repot him with cactus mix. I find that the cactus mix works best for him. He'll get some new nutrients. I'll probably throw in a little bit more of that fertilizer. I'll give him a good water. I'll spritz under all the leaves like I did with the monsteras and then I'll go in and give him a spritz as well. So everybody got washed, short spurts, got those bugs off. Then we spritzed them down with the horticultural, horticultural spray, the horticultural spray, um, which I hope will help kill any insects that are still on there. I'm now gonna let these guys drip dry. I'm gonna put them in the sun so they can have their last day to soak up outdoor sun, even though it is a little bit chilly today. Um, and then here's the biggest part, plant friends. Even if you don't do these steps, the number one thing you have to do, when you bring your plants inside after being outdoors for a long time, even just for an hour, my friend had this, we brought her plant outdoors to water it with the hose. It came back, she had a slug infestation on her plant and it was outside for maybe an hour or two. Bring your plants indoors and isolate them for at least a week. That means you want to quarantine them like we've been quarantining ourselves. Put them in a place that's away from all your other plants because some of these bugs can jump from pot to pot. Keep them isolated for at least a week, two if you can. Make sure that they're still getting sun, obviously, but just monitor them. Maybe spray them down again in your shower. Maybe spray them down with horticultural spray again. Um, but monitor, see if any signs of infestation show, and then go through these process, uh, go through this process again. Uh, but make sure you quarantine before you put them back into their original homes. There is a tiny bird flying around and almost just trying to purge on the camera. Hilarious. I love Fiala Farm. I hope these tips help you. Fall is personally my favorite season of the entire year. I just love like the nip in the air. It gives everybody this like sense of nostalgia, but also hope. I don't know what it is, but I do love fall. And with fall coming, it means that we get to transition most of our horticultural passion on our house plants because in the spring and summer, obviously we're sharing it with our outdoor garden and our indoor garden, but fall and winter is house plant season. And I'm so excited to help you guys keep blooming and growing and blooming and growing myself. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, give it a like and comment below. Tell me what you're doing to prep your house plans for the winter. I know I'm getting all my grow lights set up. I've got a lot of stuff going on indoors prepping for the winter because plant friends winter is coming. Wishing you cozy, fun falls. And until next time, keep blooming do, do, and keep do, growing. Do, 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 do,